Well, like I talked already, I did not turn the camera on while I was working on the Falcon today, but more work did get done. Uh, finally cleared out some space in the garage. It's almost empty. It's still jam-packed compared to the usual normalcy of me just having bikes in here. That entire table and those two bins are all excess crap that I need to get rid of at some point. It's all Ford stuff. I still got the stupid 350 sitting over there. Chevy things that I have no plans on doing anything with unless I get super bored. I do want to figure out what went bad on that one. But it is what it is. Uh, that block there is completely fresh rebuilt. It's the one I just took out of the Falcon. Cam bearings look okay. It seems runnable. I think what I'm going to do is look for another set of lifters and another cam to put right back in there and try and get that thing pretty much set up. I might actually rig up a run stand at some point. I got enough extra parts laying around, so I think that should work. But most importantly, super glad it's back inside, no longer sitting outside in the elements. Not that I care all that much, but nice getting it back. Uh, engine hoist welder still here, all this miscellaneous crap, which need to go back to the shop at some point. Uh, on the bench, this became kind of the catch all. So I got a bunch of stuff from the teardown on the 5 Got a, another three-speed trans for the truck that actually shifts really well. Um, the one in my truck is, it works. I'm not worried about it, but it's not happy by any means. Um, so I got a little bit more garage space, still a lot more cleaning to do, because now I'm kind of leaning towards trying to keep this thing at the house. If I can run some power from the house to the garage for a welder to actually work, then this car might actually end up going in the garage. I gotta phone a friend, hit up a bunch of buddies, try and get some extra space, see if anybody can stash a bike or two for me. Uh, if I can get the bagger, because that's the big real estate item, if the bagger can leave, and maybe the chopper, the Super Glide needs a good amount of work, so I don't necessarily want to send that one out yet. Um, the chopper is pretty much good to go. The bagger also has a ton of work, so I don't really want to get rid of it, but it also takes up too much space. We'll see. I got two iron heads to get done and completely dialed before I even think about that. But as of right now, I am contemplating trying to clear out some space in the garage, bring this in there, run power for one designated outlet to the garage, and then I can start doing some of the sheet metal stuff that I've been putting off forever. Otherwise, it is more of a when can I bring it to the shop and have space and actually be able to mess around with it. The cross member and all that is fine because it's up on the lift, but the rest of it, whatever. Uh, running and driving. i got the trans lines hooked up on this thing. Don't judge. They look like absolute dog crap. I'm just trying to get a rough idea of where they're going to go. But the cooler sits down here. It's loose. I didn't mount it because I don't know what I'm doing with these lines. The battery over here is floating. It's resting in between the radiator. It's a nice little sandwich right there. Not at all mounted. And then in my research earlier today, I was trying to figure out the headlight situation. Passenger side works. Driver side does not. So if the driver side's not working, obviously like open terminal, no headlight hooked up, nothing's plugged in. So what I figured out was my wiring route. I know it's getting dark now, so you won't be able to see all that much. My wiring, I basically came from the bulkhead. None of the connectors on this car were clipped when I bought it. However, I fished it forward and ran it across the firewall to the alternator because that's really where the cluster of wires, the starter relay and the alternator is a bulk of the wiring plus the voltage regulator. I didn't have to do that. When I spent a little bit of time, I found a couple stock V6 and one or two V8 cars. Essentially what they do is come through the bulkhead and run it up along the firewall this way, which would make perfect sense because these two, three terminals in my hand here are what actually connect down to the headlight and the side running marker. So if I reroute that, the grounds were hooked up on this car when I got it. That dome light, it works. Working dome light, which is cool. So I just click the lights on. I have 
headlight, the turn signal light that actually works. I checked it. Running light, super dirty, needs clean up. Another running light. Tail lights are on. Reverse lights will not work because they're not actually hooked up to anything. Another runner. And uh, we come back up to this side. The only two lights that I have that are dead, the front fender light and the front turn signal and the headlight, which makes sense because none of those are plugged in. On the inside, dome light works, dash light works. Um, and I checked this earlier. I just finished bleeding all the brakes. So on the brakes, I do have working brake lights on both sides. We're in the car. This is going to be super echoey. Um, the only thing that I don't have working right now is one, the wipers. Two, the first time I hooked up the battery to this and tested all the wires, the if I turn the high beams on on the dash, you won't be able to see it. If I turn the high beams on on the dash, this little Falcon on top of the 60 used to light up. It stopped. I also lose my low beam when I hit the high beam switch. I did not probe anything. I did not check anything yet. But to me, that sounds like a headlight switch issue. Um, because I know all of those were working. I actually tried that earlier this morning. Everything came on. High beam, low beam. All of the stuff lit up like it was supposed to. But on the back side, the important stuff, turn signals on both sides were working. The column, uh, the column sending unit, if you will, for the turn signals, it's supposed to be have some resistance or spring tension on it. So when you click it up, it stays up. That's not working. But if I hold that lever up, the signals do flash and work proper. Same thing with the passenger side. That's all working as well. So I have brake lights. I have turn signals. Still need to hook up the front of the wires. I'll get around to that at some point. All of the parking lights work, which is an extra bonus. I've never had a car with those. The truck doesn't have them at all. And the van, they're covered in wood paneling, so I'm not gonna mess that up to fix a couple lights. But that's where we're at. So I got a runner with working electrical. Still gotta mess around with the front headlight, which makes perfect sense now that I got that figured out. Starts up pretty easy. It's completely out of gas right now. I just poured half a gallon in and got it to sputter and run for about, I don't know, a minute or so. But uh, it is very low on gas right now, so I can't really do anything until I fill that up. Still got some wiring to do on the engine bay. Still got some other miscellaneous things to do as well. But the big ones that were preventing me from running and driving this were finishing up the brakes, hooking up the trans cooler, and finishing the trans lines, which are done. So Fingers crossed, if all goes as planned, they told me about a week and a half for the drive shaft. It's been just shy of a week and a half, so if I can get the drive shaft stuff by the end of the week, I have new U joint or U bolts for the drive shaft. That should be a pretty quick and easy drop in. It's cut to length, brand new U joints, so essentially it's just going to be throw a drive shaft in it. Fire it up, let it warm up, throw some fresh gas in it, and see if I can take this around the block. The only other concern that I have at this juncture in terms of drivability, let's see here. I have a fully loaded, fully weighted down trunk, extra transmission, a ton of metal, sheet metal, cross member supports, uh, camshaft, and storage. It's turned into storage. Um, oh, the trunk light was working if you didn't see that. But if I come around to the passenger side, and bounce on the bumper. This is sitting on the ground right now. I have full suspension travel. Yes, I know it's close to hitting those stupid giant tires, but if I come around to the driver's side and bounce on this bumper, she don't want to move. Don't know what that is yet. I'm still going to take it for a quick test drive around the block and back. Um, it's a leaf spring and a shock, so maybe that shock's locked up. I really have no idea. That'll be future me problem. So there we're at. that's where we're at. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy this build. Trying to get done with this because I have a million Harleys that I would much rather be working on right now. But this is the biggest issue at this juncture because, one, it's a car. 
too. It takes up way more driveway space. Winter is 100% coming in like 40s in the morning lately. Uh, and I need this at least running and driving. I don't care if it's done done, but if I can limp it to park it for a while or limp it to the shop when I'm working on it, that frees up this driveway space or just being able to pull it out, put it, you know, pull it in and out of the driveway, roll it in and out of the garage without having to push it. That would make a world of difference for me. So like I said, if you're enjoying any of the Falcon stuff, awesome. Like, comment, subscribe. If you hate the Falcon stuff, don't worry. Harley stuff is coming very soon down the pipeline. Just running out of one daylight, two weather, and three time that I don't have. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.